Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at some crazy cool text gradients. <laughs> All right, Adobe finally uh, relented on the long time request to add gradients to text. So radial and uh, linear gradients and also have multiple shadows. And I'm, I'm still not totally sold on multiple drop shadows on what you would do with that unless you turn them into a sharp edge, a hard edge. If you're an Illustrator user, you know how powerful it is that you can have any number of strokes, that's the line on the outside of the, the text, and fills anywhere you want. Well, you can't do that here, but you can mess around with uh, adding a drop shadow and changing it to just to look like a stroke. So let's go through some text gradients uh, first, and I'll show you some uh, important things that, that aren't apparent. So here's the first example. I'm in my graphics workspace and I created some text and you can see down in the appearance, the fill is a gradient and the stroke is just a stroke. And if I click on the stroke for color, you, you, you don't have a gradient there, but if I click on the fill, you can see solid, linear or radial gradient. And here you can pick any color you want. Uh, you can add as many of these stops and they can be any different colors and they update while you're doing that. If you've added one incorrectly, you can just drag it down and get rid of it. If you're not used to working with gradients, they have a color and then there, there's a, um, a midpoint. So you don't have to have the color in the middle. You could just put a little edge on this if you want. Um, that value is determined by that number right there. And then in between, whoops, that number right there. Let me change that. Oh, okay. So that's the middle gradient and a linear, uh, a radial gradient happens from the center and then it goes out. And as you, you'll notice the default is just to add a whole bunch of them right across instead of one in the middle. And we'll, Look at that in a second. So let me just go back to linear gradient. Click OK. So that's changing the gradient when you have the full word selected. It makes a difference if you have just one letter selected. And that's one of the things that is not apparent. It's not obvious that you can change the gradient of one letter. But let's look at another example here. This is another one that uh, looks pretty good. Pretty simple. It's a pink to white gradient. And the, this is the drop shadow with a hard edge. So let me just go full screen on that. So this is what I'm talking about. This is a drop shadow, but it doesn't have any outside softness on it. it it's got a hard edge on it. So it, it looks more like an offset of the actual word. And this is a very typical graphic design where you have a black offset behind it. And it just helps to give you that a raised up feel because it'll look different if it's a soft gradient. That's, that's also another treatment that is perfectly valid. It's just a different effect. All right, now let's look at selecting individual letters. So here is a typeface and here is a gradient. Here's text with a gradient that's going through all of these different uh, uh, colors. And what, what I thought was going to happen is I thought this whole thing was going to be across here and it isn't. And if you double click and select all of these and do this, it's still not going to do what you want. It puts them all over the place. So to get this kind of an effect, which is what I wanted, I had to select an individual character. And then I had to position it in one place. I have to, to click OK, then go to the next one, and then change that, go to the next one. And it, if you look down here, while I change, while I select the characters, you can see the position is moving all over the place. So there was no way to get that evenly spaced one that I created where I had them 
all evenly spaced, I had to manually select them, apply the gradient, and then I had to fiddle around with it as I'm watching it to give uh, the impression that the overall gradient was blending through all of them. Little bit of extra work, but you can still get a really good effect. Now let's look at this next example. Um, and Zelda fans are going to like this. And let's look at what we've got here. So, I've got the gradient, linear gradient here. And I've got the shadow behind it. And that shadow is sharp. And then I've got another white shadow behind that. And I've positioned it exactly below everything. So this is, this looks more like a stroke around the outside. And th this shadow is actually going off to one side. I can change the position of where that is with these two settings here. What is the angle and how far is it moving? So it looks it looks more like an offset and then a white stroke around the whole thing. This is a very specific design technique used for many, many years. The extra white border around everything helps that graphic pop right out because we have this gradient and then we've got black, but then when you do that over white and the white is an equal part around the, the outside, boom, it just shoots right to the front. And then I've copied it on the other type there. And then the other, this type, I actually have low res 21 OT is an Adobe typeface from fonts.adobe.com. And it looks like that, that uh, typeface. And then I added a little load bar in here too. So we've got, you know, this kind of an effect. And when you put that onto a TV and add some music and then blur it a little bit so it's more like on I probably should desaturate it too. Now you've got the Zelda loading screen. Whee! So one more thing I want to show you is if we go back to this one, it's the easiest to see, is there's an angle in here. As I change that angle, you see that it's now moving around. And again, it's doing it per letter. So there you go. Pretty simple, but uh, some cool types of effects. The double, triple drop shadows, and I did two. I did the black with the white uh, stroke around it, but you could have as many of those, and they can all be soft edges, and they can face in different directions. I mean, have a look at this. I just was doing a little bit of a test. That's one shape, and there are two drop shadows on here with sharp edges on them just to give another interesting effect that you can do that you might not think of uh, as a drop shadow, but I, I think that's, that's just a different way to look at it. Lots of tools, lots of things to play with. The fact that you can select one character and change um, the color, the gradient, the rotation of that is, it's really easy to miss. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop, where you can donate once or um, monthly, any amount. There's a bunch of free stuff to download. Become a member, buy some tickers, buy some split screens. Join us here, support us here. We really do appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen closely uh, for Adobe to finally give us new things like gradients and then show you how you can use them.